Pyroslime, a small monster created by the sedimentation of pyro dispersed throughout nature. Its intelligence is very basic, but its uses are just as broad. Well, for hillichurls, that is. Large Pyroslime A monster created by the sedimentation of pyro dispersed throughout nature. Though its intelligence is not increased with its size, it is very hot. During dry seasons, it can cause wildfires. It will spit forth blazing fireballs unangered, and will turn dark when it is stealing down. A most expressive slime indeed. Hydroslime a small monster created by the sedimentation of hydro dispersed throughout nature. Legend has it that some people would use hydro slimes as an emergency water source, packing them in preparation for travels through dry regions or deep domains. But due to the high concentration of hydro within these slimes, direct ingestion is, in fact, harmful to the human body. Large Hydro Slime a monster created by the sedimentation of hydro dispersed throughout nature. A larger and more powerful hydro slime that can create bubbles to entrap its enemies. It is said that they can grow to truly staggering sizes if given an energy-rich environment. Eyewitnesses have supposedly seen hydro slimes as large as a small mound in Wolvendom. Animal Slime a small monster created by the coalescing of animo dispersed throughout nature. It is able to float in the air to a certain degree due to the power of animo. Large Animo Slime, a monster created by the coalescing of animo dispersed throughout nature. Owing to being comprised of a greater concentration of animo, their flotation abilities are stronger than that of animo slimes. The hillotrolls living out in the wilds have made use of this special characteristic, creating special vehicles that use large animo slimes as a form of locomotion to transport goods from unknown sources. Electro Slime, a small monster created by the coalescing of electro dispersed throughout nature. According to analyses, the jumping of electro slimes reflects the electric potential difference in the ground. In areas brimming over with electro, their unusual movements can be observed and used to avoid danger. Large Electro Slime, a monster created by the coalescing of electro dispersed throughout nature. Due to the abundant electro within its form, it will deliver an electric shock to its surroundings from time to time. At present, some have attempted to harness this energy to aid in production activities. Perhaps some new science will be born from this. Mutant Electro Slime, a monster created by the coalescing of electro dispersed throughout nature. Electro slimes can undergo mutations to become bright yellow. Due to the abundant electro within its form, it will deliver an electric shock to its surroundings from time to time, and it can even cause nearby electro slimes to release electric arcs. This arc lightning will not balance between purple electro slimes, which shows that electro slimes have two different polarities. One wonders if some great new science could emerge from the study of such phenomena. Dendro Slime A slime that has undergone ecological changes due to abundant dendro in its environment. 
It has also taken on the weaknesses of the Dendro element, and will burn intensely the moment it meets a bright flame. Large Dendro Slime A slime that has undergone ecological changes due to abundant dendro in its environment. There are some who see it as something similar to the Whopper flowers, hiding its true form to trick and hunt its prey, and some regard it as a slime that has been parasitized by some special plant. From this point of view, might some cultures also see these slimes as having some special medicinal value? Cryo slime, a small monster created through the coagulation of cryo in the natural environment. Competitors once spread malicious rumors that the Dawn Winery used cryo slimes to control the temperature of their wine cellar and preserve the quality of their alcohol. Large Cryo Slime, a monster created through the coagulation of cryo in the natural environment. These slimes can use the abundant cryo energies within themselves to freeze the moisture in the atmosphere and form a protective shell around themselves. They can also utilize a similar principle to freeze the water around them. On some level, this can be considered to be the freest species of slime, as it can cross oceans and seas with ease. Geoslime, small monsters created through the buildup of geo within the Earth. Generally speaking, the crust of the Earth is filled with geo energy. Geoslimes that are formed this way have similarly down to earth sort of feeling. Large Geoslime Monsters created through the buildup of geo within the earth. They can harden the energy within their bodies into a carapace of stone that protects them and prevents damage. The legend of a golden geo slime king once circulated among the treasure hoarders. They believe that since gemstones and ores have geo energy within them, geo slimes, which also contain geo energy, may also be a type of gemstone or ore. Eye of the Storm A corporeal form of extremely high quality animal energies. The formation of an Eye of the Storm indicates that the elemental ley lines of a region are blocked, which has led to stillation. Its reckless, heedless wielding of storms that all but sweeps people off their feet may be due to its nature as a symbol of the world stricken by malaise. Pyrohypostasis Codename Ion, a high purity pyro entity. According to researchers, elemental hypostases are related to anomalies in local elemental veins. But whether it is the existence of elemental hypostases that have affected elemental veins, or the mutated elemental energy that created elemental hypostases remains to be confirmed. Hydrohypostasis, codename H, huh, a high purity hydro entity. Hypostases have strong rejection properties, and will mercilessly expel any that test them. Its rejection behavior even extends to natural elements. Animal Hypostasis Codename Beth A high purity animal entity Elemental hypostases are life forms which have completely abandoned their former appearance and biological structure, making them able to reach the highest level of elemental purity. Research into hypostases is mainly led by scholars of Sumeru Academia, 
but due to the level of danger that they pose, little of substance is known about hypostases beyond their scientific name and codename. Electrohypostasis, codename Aleph, a high purity electro entity. Elemental hypostases are the highest forms of elemental structures, usually formed either at a location bursting with elemental energy or at a clogged way line. Elemental hypostases have developed various attacks based on their elemental attributes. Cryohypostasis, codename Dalit, a high purity cryo entity. Research suggests that there are subtle differences between elemental hypostases and other elemental life forms in terms of their physical composition. Perhaps these differences can account for their high level of homeostasis and their almost mechanical movements. Geohypostasis Co-name, Gamel, a high-purity geo-entity. Elemental hypostases are ultra-compact structures with a high mass. Concentrated elemental energy forms a solid shell around the core of a hypostasis, leaving only the core reactive to elemental stimuli. Oceanid, a life form created from condensed hydro elements of incredible purity, often attached to bodies of water. It is said that as water bodies become purer, the hydro elements within it grow more abundant, causing the oceanids to grow more powerful. It is also said by some that oceanids were once sea creatures from a home far away who have carried the fragments of a long dead god to the many corners of this world. Perhaps they did this so that the love their god held for this world could be spread through the waters to all of the land. Thunder Manifestation, an abnormal electro-elemental lifeform. Although it might appear similar to an ocean, it, it does not possess her intelligence or memories. That which drives to Thunder Manifestation is a much more primal fury. It is said that these lifeforms will only descend like lightning upon places that play host to great lingering resentment, such as a fragmented Amakumo Peak, where the storm clouds ever roil. As long as the grudges of the land do not fade, so will the Roaring Thunder persist. Pyrospector, a monster born from highly concentrated pyro elements that can float in the air. There was once an academia student who conducted research into their behavior. He believed that specters were a form of crystal fly, since they both had powers of flight and both were birthed in areas saturated with elemental energy. He has not graduated yet. Hydrospector, a monster birthed from a high concentration of hydra that can float in the air. On moonlit nights, hydrospectors will give off a ghostly glow as they float by the riverbank. Their furtive forms are often mistaken by passers-by for wandering spirits, which has made them mainstays in quite a few folktales.
Animo Spectre, a monster birthed from a high concentration of animo that can float in the air. As reason might dictate, monsters made from coalesced animo already come equipped with their ability to float. As such, their petal-like wings are most likely to be a mimetic organ first and foremost. Electrospector, a monster born from highly concentrated electro elements that can float in the air. A certain researcher once studied these creatures. He believed that they must be hypostases of some kind. After all, they both had elemental peculiarities and were birthed from areas saturated with elemental energy, right? By the way, he was later investigated for academic corruption. Cryospectre, a monster born from highly concentrated cryo-elements that can float in the air. A certain alchemist once studied these beings, speculating that they might be a kind of slime or the traveler, as none of the above needed a vision to use the elements. He was reprimanded by his teacher. Geospectre, a monster birthed from a high concentration of geo that can float in the air. Geospectres mimic the fruit of certain plants when their wings are closed together. As such, they are held by some ancient tales to be the fruit of a giant tree in the sky, and are regarded as having mysterious medical value. Hilatrol, the primitive wandering inhabitants of Teyvat's wildernesses. They look very similar to humanity, but seem to have lost both their intellect and spirituality. Their presence on the continent has been recorded for over a thousand years, and yet they neither have history nor civilization. Since the pitch black calamity from 500 years ago, they have begun to spread in large numbers across the land. They are not very strong, and they lack organization but they nonetheless bring sizable trouble to humans every once in a while. Helotrol Fighter, the primitive wandering inhabitants of Teyvat's wildernesses. Ill-tempered warriors for the tribes, they are simple-minded believers in the power of brute force. If their muscles grow strong enough and their strength great enough, then one day they too shall raise up a great shield and become a Mitotrol. Or will they? Hilotro Berserker, the primitive wandering inhabitants of Teyvat's wildernesses. These Hilotrols wield flaming clubs and charge with reckless abandon to chase intruding adventurers off. Most wildfires in the grasslands or forests are not actually caused by a certain special knight, but due to the actions of these Hilotrols. Wooden Shield Hill Troll Guard, the primitive wandering inhabitants of Teyvat's wildernesses. 
Ultra warriors who have wooden shields. These shields are not only sturdy defensive tools, but also treasured items within the tribe. According to many reports, Hillatrolls will often charge at travelers making camp to cook and will snatch their pot wins after chasing them away. Ice Shield Hillatroll Guard The primitive wandering inhabitants of Tavot's wildernesses. Hillatrolls display a strong sense of adaptability to their surroundings. In icy environments, they come up with ways and means to fashion this hard ice into shields to protect themselves. Rock Shield Hill Troll Guard The primitive wintering inhabitants of Tavot's wildernesses. Hardy hill trolls who have congregated in a region where geo-energies are abundant. Their impregnable shields have layers of rocky growths on them. Hillatrol Shooter The primitive wandering inhabitants of Tavot's wildernesses. Hillatrol archers who build simple crossbows. Hillatrols do not, in truth, possess the craftsmanship needed to build crossbows. As such, it is commonly believed that there is an organization that controls the Hillatrols from behind the scenes and furnishes them with equipment and material supplies. The abyss mages that often accompany these Hillatrols are especially suspicious. Pyro Hillatrol Shooter The primitive water inhabitants of Tavot's wildernesses. These archers wield simple crossbows, and their arrowheads are coated with a thin layer of flammable material that can set their targets on fire. El Musk of the previous generation believed that this is an innovation by brighter Hillatrols who wish to cook their game after hunting it. Electro Hillatrol Shooter the primitive wandering inhabitants of Tavot's wildernesses. These archers wield simple crossbows. Their arrowheads are crafted from carved electro crystals that will deliver an electric shock upon an impact. They say that Hillatrol archers of exceptional skill can fire five crossbow bolts at once. A most impressive feat indeed. Cryo Hillatrol Shooter, the primitive wandering inhabitants of Tavot's wildernesses. These archers wield simple crossbows, and unmelting ice shrouds their arrowheads. It is said that wounds caused by these arrowheads heal very slowly, as the cold will slow the circulation of the blood. Hillatrol Grenadier The primitive wandering inhabitants of Tavot's wildernesses. These sneaky fellows are skilled in the use of pyro slimes, using them as weapons to attack intruders. Skilled Grenadiers may be able to destroy four wooden dummies in a single throw. Electro Hillatrol Grenadier the primitive wandering inhabitants of Tavot's wildernesses. Electro slimes don't seem to have as many applications as pyro slimes or animo slimes in the benighted lives of the Hillatrolls. Perhaps one day they may discover the flow of elements in between electro slime and mutant electro slime and make some great progress. Cryo Hillatrol Grenadier, the primitive wandering inhabitants of Tavot's wildernesses. Hillatrols have discovered the use of cryo slimes in effectively keeping food fresh. Hillatrols have surprising amounts of wisdom in the practical use of slimes, whether it be the use of pyro and cryo slimes to make exploding barrels, or the use of animo slimes in vehicles. Perhaps this is their way of adapting to their hard lot in life.
unusual hillatrol. Hamu, hamu, mimi, damu. Wooden Shield Wall Mitotrol, a muscular hillatrol who has been forged in countless fights. They know how to use dendro slimes to create tough shields which they wield in combat. With their powerful muscles, glossy fur, and sturdy, reliable silhouettes, they help the hillatrols withstand the pitiless assaults of adventurers, and they hold a rather exalted rank amongst the tribes. Rock Shield Wall Mitotrol, a muscular hillatrol that uses a rock as a shield. Fighting and eating meat are the two most important things to hillatrols, because those are what make them grow stronger. All young hillatrols dream of growing up to become a big and strong mitotrol, because that way they can eat more meat, fight more battles, and wield those almost impregnable giant rock shields. Ice Shield Wall Mitotrol A muscular hillatrol that uses solid ice as a shield, wielding it in battle. Reason normally dictates that large creatures that see a lot of action should burn through a great number of calories to sustain themselves. As such, the present-day L Musk has proposed the Mitotrol Index. This index correlates the percentage of Mitotrols within the hillatrol population the stability and success of hillatrol forging activity. Blazing Axe Mitotrol Muscular hillatrols who wield large two-handed axes, attacks with large strikes, and will use pyro slimes to infuse their axes with pyro. They are very lethal. Usually, repeatedly quenching a weapon the way a blazing axe mitotrol does will decrease the hardness of the metal and cause the axe head's edge to chip more easily. But such is the strength of the mitotrols that even should the edge disappear altogether, they can still use their axes as hammers. Crackling Axe Mitotrol Muscular hillatrols who wield large, two-handed axes attacks with large strikes and uses electro slimes to infuse their axes with electro. Their blows are very lethal. Axes forged from steel are highly conductive material. The image of those tall and strong crackling axe mitotrols holding up their axes to summon lightning is quite majestic to their hillatrols. Thunderhelm Lawatrol, a mysterious lord of the hillatrols that strides through the thunderstorm. This large hillatrol is referred to as Lawa by its brethren. Its giant body is so saturated with electro energy that elemental energy seeps through the cracks in its body in the form of electro crystal growths. Frostarm Lawatrol, a mysterious lord of the hillatrols that stalks the snow and fog. This huge hillatrol is referred to as Lawa by its brethren. Its body, honed to the very limit, 
almost seems to blend into its cryo-filled environment. And its stoic nobility is like that of the frozen Northland rivers. Stonehide Wawachurl, a mysterious lord of the Hillachurls that walks between a thousand peaks. This huge Hillachurl is referred to as a Lawa by its brethren. The abundant geo energies within the environment have become part of their flesh, blood, and skin, which look as if they were chiseled out of the mountain rock. Hydro Samatrol, a wizened, mumbling Hillachurl. One that chants the power of Hydro. Hilo trolls especially gifted in commanding the elements who often reach the zenith of their skill in their twilight years. What sort of life would lead to such simple creatures being able to summon water and rains? Animo Samma Troll A wise and a mumbling Hilo troll, one that spreads the message of Animo. Hillachurls especially gifted in commanding the elements who often reach the zenith of their skill in their twilight years. Their ability to command a flowing wind stem from dark, forgotten memories. Electro Samatrol a wizened, mumbling Hillachurl, one that prays to Electro. Hillachurl is especially gifted in commanding the elements who often reach the zenith of their skill in their twilight years. Since they possess such advanced skill in creating electricity and summoning thunder, you may as well use the crackling sound to compose an elegy. Dendro Samatrol, a wizened, mumbling Hillachurl, one that awakens the might of Dendro. Hillachurl is especially gifted in commanding the elements who often reach the zenith of their skill in their twilight years. A grudge stirs beneath that mask, and poison ivy spreads as hateful whispers issue forth from it. Cryo Samatrol, a wizened, mumbling Hillachurl, one that calls upon the bite of Cryo. Hillachurl is especially gifted in commanding the elements who often reach the zenith of their skill in their twilight years. These shamans remember the frosty chants and are even more skilled in the art of using them to entrap their foes. Geo Samatrol, a wizened, mumbling Hillachurl, one that listens to the strength of Geo. Hillachurl is especially gifted in commanding the elements who often reach the zenith of their skill in their twilight years. To the persevering mountains, these old Hillachurls are but children, but their memories and experiences have guided them towards gaining power over rock and stone. Pyro Abyss Mage, abyss creatures who command the power of Pyro in battle. For unknown reasons, abyss mages are able to communicate with the hill trolls, thus enabling them to manipulate their minds easily. They say that abyss mages utter a long forgotten language from which they draw magical power. Hydro Abyss Mage, abyss creatures that utilize hydro energy in battle. Stories circulate among adventurers that abyss mages are at the lowest rung of the abyss order's hierarchy, and that they roam the various lands to scheme fell deeds of destruction. 
though they also make fun of these abyss mages, saying that the most harm they can do is to cause rheumatism or a common cold. Their power is not to be underestimated. Electro Abyss Mage Abyss creatures that utilize Electro in battles. While studying at the Academia, researcher Alvis Nicola once conducted a systemic study of the methods by which Electro Abyss Mages manipulate Electro and came up with a theoretical weapon known as the Nicola Coil. However, it is yet to be put into practice. Some say that his research materials were eaten during a fungal infestation. Cryo Abyss Mage Abyss creatures that call upon Cryo in battle. Though they dapple with great power and can even create icicles by condensing and freezing water vapor in the atmosphere, their bodies are very vulnerable in and of themselves. Once their protective barrier has been broken, they are at your mercy. Abyss Herald, Wicked Torrents. Servants of the Abyss Order that use Hydro in combat. These silent figures are the vanguard of the Abyss, brandishing tidal blades that can engulf everything in an instant, crumpling armor and obliterating heretics. They shall bring preordained damnation upon the foolish masses. Abyss Lector, Fathomless Flames Wielders of Abyssal Fire who pursue the meaning behind texts and scriptures is a member of the Abyss Order. The surface people have a slightly distorted understanding of what their name means, calling them Lectors, when their names can also mean Exegate. Reading the Word of Grace grants them great power. Abyss Lector, Violent Lightning. A monster who serves the Abyss Order and commands lightning while singing the praises of the darkness. These are the evangelists and the scholars of the Abyss. Their violent lightning strikes the hearts of unbelievers with dark wisdom. Warped by the shadowy depths of an eternal night, its violent glow proclaiming the existence of a great power that corrodes human intellect. Rockfond Griffhound Whelp, a beast with a monstrous blood that is capable of eroding the boundaries of the world. Gold classified them as Alphaso. They follow the encroaching abyss to devour the elements. Fortunately, there are few of them left now in this world. Thunder Craven Rifthound Whelp, a beast with monstrous blood that is capable of eroding the boundaries of the world. Gold classified them as Alphasol. The previous eras, when giant monstrous beasts descended, large swarms of these hounds would go before them to deliquise the borders of the world and open the way. Rockland Rifthound a beast with monstrous blood that is capable of eroding the boundaries of the world. They were created by gold. They do display similar biological behaviors similar to that of real wolves. Perhaps they feel jealousy towards these of their next of kin and dream of replacing them someday. Thank you.
Under Craven Rifthound, a beast with monstrous blood that is capable of eroding the boundaries of the world, they were created by gold. Once upon a time, they ran right upon the continent, but they went extinct for a while due to resistance and mass hunts. Recently, however, they have re-emerged. The pack of black wolves that now threaten Springvale and Wolvendom are such creatures. Golden Wolf Ward. Hailing from a dark world, this ruler of the Black Wolves has the power to call upon its followers, its hidden claws, to dissolve space itself and forge a rift through which it may enter. The Wolf Ward has no name, for it was but one of Gold's unintentional creations, and that is precisely why it is obsessed with invading worlds that do not belong to it and make a name for itself. That said, the Wolf Pack is far from unintelligent. After suffering a defeat in his previous invasion, a deserted island where no humans or protectors dwell has been selected for them to prepare for their ward's descent. Fatui Skirmisher, Pyrus or Bracer. A Fatui soldier who wields a flaming gun, skirmisher weapons can control the elements to a certain extent, and their combat tactics utilize elemental reactions. Their ordinance and knowledge of squad-based combat thus constitute no small threat in battle. Hydro Gunner Legionnaire a soldier encased within a Fatui war machine. Armed with equipment that can control the elements to a certain extent, their guns are capable of firing jets of water. These skirmishers do not question if they shall live or die as they advance into nations far from home to complete advanced missions and lay the groundwork for operations to come. Animo Boxer Vanguard, a skirmisher armed with the ability to manipulate Animo and heal their comrades. They departed from their motherland and did so for its sake. They left their family, yet gained allies to stick through thick and thin with. Perhaps such thoughts are what get them through the unscrupulous work that their missions entail. Fatui Skirmisher, Electro Hammer Vanguard. A sturdily built skirmisher armed with an electro powered warhammer. As a Fatui soldier, one has access to magnificent resources, salaries, armaments, and supplies. But at the same time, it also means much time away from home and family, and putting one's life in the hands of comrades one has never met. Fatui Skirmisher, Cryo Gunner Legionnaire, a soldier encased in a Fatui war machine. Armed with equipment that can control the elements to a certain extent, their guns are capable of firing jets of frost. Though this may confer elemental power beyond the ken of ordinary humans, that power may yet come at a price. Geochanter Bracer, a skirmisher with the ability to generate a geo shield and defend their allies. Unlike the elite mages and agents, Fatui skirmishers are soldiers of lesser individual might. To complete their tasks and reduce losses in men and material, their tactics are thus more reliant on teamwork.
Fatui Pyro Agent. A Fatui Secret Agent. The duty of a Fatui Agent is to settle debts. But not only those of a monetary or goods in kind nature. They also ensure dues are paid when it comes to the principle of an eye for an eye. If there is one thing that Fatui are not known for, it is leniency. And whoever dares to oppose them would invoke the full force of their wrath. Fatui Electro Sissant Mage. A Fatui Mage who can command Electro Sissants in battle. Their origins and what they look like under that mask are both mysteries. Similarly to the way that Electro Sissants go crazy for Miskras, Sissant Mages take great pleasure in toying with their prey. Cryo Sissant Mage. A Fatui mage who can command cryo in battle. Their origins and what they look like under that mask are both mysteries. Reason dictates that those who lack visions should not be able to control the elements as these mages do. However, in addition to using mist grass to control the cryo they also boldly wield the might of frost. Seeing them as they wander the land in their seemingly aimless way, one can't help but wonder about the duty that must compel them. Mirror Maiden, a Fatui mage who can command a Hydra Mirror in battle. Her posture is highly dignified, as if she is one who worships a god. The Hydra Mirror she manipulates lures those enchanted by her to willingly fall for her illusion. Nothing seems to escape her ears. No one knows what those covered eyes might have seen, nor what kind of obsession might be reflected in them. Ruin Guard, an ancient humanoid war machine. Legend has it that these machines were combat automatons created by a long-destroyed nation. They now wander ruins in ancient Detritus, attacking offending travelers. Research indicates that the Ruin Guards and the ruins they operate in do not originate from the same source, suggesting that there may be a difference of as much as several thousand years between them on the line. So why do the Ruin Guards continue staying there amongst these ruins, using their explosive firepower to protect the crumbling walls and broken tiles? Ruin Hunter A giant alien-looking war machine. They are said to be remnants from a lost ancient nation. It seems that the creators opted to forego the war-performing humanoid design in pursuit of improved combat effectiveness. They are extremely dangerous both in melee and ranged combat. Considering these mere relics possess such extraordinary power, one cannot help but wonder what the civilization that produced them must have looked like at its height. Ruin Grader, an ancient humanoid war machine. Their form is similar to that of Ruin Guards, but is more distorted and more powerful. Energy cores have been installed in both its legs, as though to power its overly heavy form.
Brew Increaser. Variously bizarrely shaped machines that have taken different forms and functions to adapt to different goals. Legend has it that they are war machines left behind by a nation that has already been destroyed. Compared to their more common ruin guards, their forms have greater value in the study of biomimesis. The inspiration for its decentralized design and combat modes seem to have come from honeybee colonies, rendering it able to change forms and to attack from different directions. Ruin Destroyer Variously bizarrely shaped machines that have taken different forms and functions to adapt to different goals. Legend has it that they are war machines left behind by a nation that has already been destroyed. Compared to their more common ruin guards, their forms have greater value in the study of biomimesis. The giant crown, composed of several parts, looks like some sort of frightening point. One wonders what one has to go through in order to design such a scary machine. Ruin Defender Variously bizarrely shaped machines that have taken different forms and functions to adapt to different goals. Legend has it that they are war machines left behind by a nation that has already been destroyed. Compared to their more common ruin guards, their forms have greater value in the study of biomimesis. The insect-like limbs are more agile than those of humanoid machines. The shield formed by its various components can resist any frontal attack. Ruin Scout Variously bizarrely shaped machines that have taken different forms and functions to adapt to different goals. Legend has it that they are war machines left behind by a nation that has already been destroyed. Compared to their more common ruin guards, their forms have greater value in the study of biomimesis. Exactly why the form and movements of certain deep sea life forms are being imitated is not known. But either way, tangling with them is hardly the best idea. Perpetual Mechanical Array A strange, alien machine. They say that it is a war machine left behind by a nation that has already been destroyed. Composed of several different parts, it can adapt to its combat environment and employ a variety of attacks. This machine, comprised of cubic shapes, is on some level very much like the elemental hypostasis. Magu Kinki, a disciplined mechanical swordsman, doesn't seem to have the ability nor will to speak, but instead only seeks to communicate with crossed swords. It is said that this machine was made using the memories of a first generation master of a certain sword school. However, it malfunctioned, lost control, and was ultimately discarded. Some think that the machine's spirit still lingers in the place where its fate was ended. They also say that the vicious mask that serves as its guard was inspired by a famous Oni from that era. Treasure Hoarders Scout a member of a decentralized criminal organization that has footprints all over the continent and even deep within unknown domains. Theirs is the legwork and tailing of targets. They usually wind up in criminal circles due to poverty or lack of education. But they don't seem to have gotten any richer after choosing a life of crime. Treasure Hoarders, Pyro Potioneer. A member of the decentralized criminal organization that has footprints all over the continent and even deep within unknown domains. Risk takers who have utilized their knowledge of chemistry to mix volatile and flammable brews and aid in their comrades' dastardly schemes. Treasure Hoarders, Hydro Potioneer, a member of a decentralized criminal organization that has footprints all over the continent and even deep within unknown domains. 
They say that some treasure hoarder potioners used to be charlatans who would wander villages, towns, and cities, hawking their special blends of elixirs, holy waters, and the like. These cure-alls certainly seem to have served better in combat than they ever did in chicanery. Electro Potioner A member of the decentralized criminal organization that has footprints all over the continent and even deep within unknown domains. Potioner is the nickname given to members of the Treasure Hoarder organization who know how to brew up dangerous chemicals. What? Did you think that this treasure has Adventurer's Guild written all over it or something? A certain treasure hoarder pushed here during a confrontation with adventurers. Treasure Hoarder Cryo Potioner A member of the decentralized criminal organization that has footprints all over the continent and even deep within unknown domains. Cryo potioners are quite the welcome sight amongst the treasure hoarders due to their elixirs having the ability to rapidly cool things down. Even out in the wild where there are no misfires to be found, they can still have some cold liquor to make merry with. Treasure Hoarder Handyman A member of the decentralized criminal organization that has footprints all over the continent and even deep within unknown domains. These members do physical work and are lower in the pecking order. They are often laughed at for their physique. But when the gang comes under attack, they get a chance to show their unexpectedly high strength and agility. Treasure Hoarder Marksman a member of the decentralized criminal organization that has footprints all over the continent and even deep within unknown domains. Even though they are called marksmen, this name has an undercurrent of mockery to it, as they use crossbows instead of bows, which acquire a long period of training to use. It must be said that even hillish trolls know how to operate a crossbow. Just point the wider end at the enemy, pull the trigger, and BAM! That's all there is to it. Treasure Hoarder Gravedigger A member of the decentralized criminal organization that has footprints all over the continent and even deep within unknown domains. They say we stand on the shoulders of giants. That means digging up the accumulated wealth of our forebears, taking them with us, and, uh, uh, returning them to the economic cycle. What a noble endeavor, am I right? A certain Treasure Hoarder Gravedigger, while delving deep into a ruin. Treasure Hoarder Seaman A member of a decentralized criminal organization that has footprints all over the continent and even within deep unknown domains. Stealing? What do you mean, stealing? It's rediscovery, I tell you. The return of treasure to those who appreciate it. Makes everyone happy to boot. How great is that, eh? A certain Treasure Hoarder Seaman, in response to a question posed by a doubtful recruit. Treasure Hoarder Pugilist A member of the decentralized criminal organization that has footprints all over the continent and even within deep unknown domains. Passionate about battle and muscles, they are quite picky about food and will often boast of the benefits of having fine musculature, leading to some dissatisfaction from their fellow treasure hoarders. Treasure Hoarder Crusher, a member of the decentralized criminal organization that has footprints all over the continent and even deep within unknown domains. This person was originally a miner, one who, even with the allowance they were provided with after the closure of the chasm, ended up with the treasure hoarders for various reasons. Nobushi, Jintoban, Samurai who have fallen into banditry, 
No, they are called the Nobushi. They do not have a centralized organization. Having pursued the path of a martial artist for a long time, they possess highly advanced sword skills but no longer use them for good. Sometimes, they even collude with the treasure hoarders or Fatui out of agreed for wealth, or simply to survive. Nobushi, Itsukuban, Samurai who have fallen into banditry. Though they are called the Nobushi, they do not have a centralized organization. They not only possess highly advanced sword skills, but can also carry out flame powder attacks using the elements. Objectively speaking, perhaps this method of winning goes against the path of a martial artist. Sometimes they even collude with the treasure hoarders or Fatui out of a greed for wealth, or simply to survive. Nobushi, Kikoban, Samurai who have fallen into banditry. Though they are called the Nobushi, they do not have a centralized organization. They possess highly advanced sword skills and also use crossbows to ambush opponents, using any means to win. Those who have abandoned the title of a martial artist often abandon their dignity as well. Sometimes they even quote with the treasure hoarders of Fatui out of a greed for wealth, or simply to survive. Kairagi, Fiery Might Samurai who have fallen into banditry. They practiced martial arts since they were young, but lost the opportunity to serve the people due to certain reasons and turned from a righteous path. Their blade's edges are not cold like ordinary steel, but instead burn with a bitter flame. They seem to have used paper seals, created from a lost kamuna art, to set their blades aflame. Kairagi, Dancing Thunder, Samurai who have fallen into banditry. They possess highly advanced martial arts skill, but found no use for them for various reasons. Out of desperation, they have fallen onto the path of evil. They use paper seals, created from a Kamina art that has been lost for centuries to infuse their police with the power of lightning. Pyro Whopperflower, a mimetic plant monster that attacks without warning and uses pyro to hunt its prey. The world of Teva plays host to plants and foods of the elements. Having gained a measure of intellect, their nutritional needs have also greatly increased. Electro Whopperflower Energetic mimetic plant monsters that use Electro to attack their prey. When fully charged with Electro energy, they can unleash a strong electric current from their crowns. As such, some researchers have tried to apply them in certain areas. Cryo Whopper Flower, a mimetic plant monster that appears out of nowhere and uses Cryo in combat. These plants work under the surface and ambush unsuspecting prey. With the passage of years, sufficient nutrition, and the right environment, it could even take root somewhere and grow into a giant cryo regis vine. Pyro regis vine. A giant vine that has absorbed the ancient flame that rages with the ley lines. It is restless as if filled with endless fury. Poets, bards, and even some academics believe that the elements also contain emotions and hopes. If this is true, then one can only wonder what emotions caused the pyro regis vine to burn eternally, writhing like one longing to be free from the confines of the earth. Cryo Regis Vine, a monster formed from a vine that was imbued with the essence of biting frost within the ley lines. Some studies suggest that plants are like the organs of the world, 
harmonizing the turbulent elemental energies of the ley lines. Concrete examples of this phenomena are mist flowers, whopper flowers, and the like, which brim over with elemental energy. In certain circumstances, certain plants will turn into creatures of monstrous size and intent, such as the cryoregispines, in the course of many years. Geobishop Hatchwing A young bishop with a hard geo-exoskeleton. Bishops are exceptionally agile creatures that one would be wise not to underestimate in battle. Experts from Sumeru Academia believe that they become dragons when fully grown. By avoiding predators and natural disasters, perhaps they can even live long enough to become formidable beasts that reign over entire mountains. Geovision, a mature Geovision. It is said that after many years have passed, Geovision hatchlings will shed the armor that originally protected them and become Geovisions. However, these two and the older, greater Primo Geovisions have spent many years hibernating under the mountains, and have only emerged to become active in recent times. As such, none can personally attest to having witnessed or recorded such a thing in person. Primo Geobishop. After many years, the awesomely powerful Primo Geobishops grow accustomed to changes in their elemental environment. Book tales hold that even after the great draconic calamity that led to the ruination of Tiancho Valley, the overlord of the Geobishops and Primo Geobishops was imprisoned deep beneath the earth. And so too did they burrow into deep and unseen places, awaiting their chance to rise once more. Primordial Bathysmal Bishop A bishop that dwells deep beneath the oceans. They were once the dominant race in the depths, and indeed, dragons were the overlords of a whole world in an even earlier age. But their former seven sovereigns were defeated by a power from the heavens, withering one by one. Rhymebiter Bethysmal Bishop, a bishop that dwells deep beneath the oceans. Due to certain social adaptations, it has manifested a form aligned with the cryo element. The coming of humans sparked a conflict and a resultant evolution within the Bethysmal Bishops, just as ants might divide up labor and biological characteristics, thus appearing in different forms. These bishops are stronger than their ordinary kin. Bull Eater Bathysmal Bishop, a bishop that dwells deep beneath the oceans. Due to certain social adaptations, it has manifested a form aligned with the Electro element. Following the fading of the Seven Sovereigns' power, a new generation of sovereigns is presently being born. But now that the Bathysmal Bishops have evolved in this matter, er, but now that the Bathysmal Bishops have evolved in this manner, they have lost their purity. As such, the Dragon of Water will no longer be born from among their ranks. Prophecy holds that the new Dragon of Water will definitely descend in the form of a human. Hydro Assistant Little creatures that can ever so slightly manipulate Hydro. They and other creatures are known collectively as Sissons, and they truly adore the rare and wonderful Mistgrass plant. It is by exploiting this relationship that the Fatui mages have sought to command our citizens in battle.
Electro Sisson. Little creatures that ever so slightly manipulate Electro. They and other creatures are known collectively as Sissons, and although they are individually weak, they can cause significant damage under the right circumstances. Cryo Sisson. Little creatures that can ever so slightly manipulate Cryo. They and other such creatures are known collectively as Sissons. They are individually very weak, but it is precisely because they are weak that they have evolved unique methods of movement that allow them to avoid predators. Storm Terror, one of the four winds of Lonstadt, Dvalin, the dragon of the east. With the passages of long years and amid boundless darkness, even the purest gem will become dulled by dust, and even the noble dragon might be corrupted and cankered by hatred. But never forget that dust can be wiped away, and the power of doubt and poison can be shattered. Fly freely in the sky, just like you did in those days when we met, when I walked upon this land and sang the songs of the wind. And you soared on high, looking down on the world from above. Today, the sky is no longer swept by wind and snow. The green grass grows all over the earth, and it is beautiful. If you could walk the earth and listen to the songs of shepherds and the scattered sound of the wind chimes in the distance, if you could have tasted wine as sweet as honey, you could understand. How wonderful it would have been if you were as I, witnessing your noble, beautiful form as he soared through the blue sky. Then you would know that this sky and this earth are both things worth fighting for. Lupus Boreas, Dominator of Wolves The noblest and greatest of souls, who watches over the Lupical in Wolvendom. When the wolf pack is imperiled, it will emerge in the form of a wolf and show forth its fangs and claws. The wolves of Wolvendom are frightening phantoms to the people of Mondstadt, a bored shape flashing through the forest, a chilling howl in the indeterminate distance, a creeping sense of eyes constantly nailed to their backs. Humans rarely have the opportunity to walk their eyes of the wolf, for this is the law of the mysterious way down for its race. Child, Child, Tartalia, eleventh of the Fatui Harbingers. He draws power from the ominous delusion he possesses and fights using martial arts that he learned in a land of darkness. He is a pure warrior with an insatiable lust for battle. Each bloody conflict, each life and death struggle is a delightful trial to him. People say that the young child is famed throughout the land for his battle prowess, but he has never taken big talk of this kind to heart. After all, you shall ever be the eye of the storm, and the clashing of steel shall ever accompany you. The pitch black memory of stepping into uttermost darkness shall at last become the strength by which you will overturn this world. Ejdaha! An enormous dragon as ancient as the mountains themselves. In an age that is all but faded from memory, he stood shoulder to shoulder with the one who ruled over a harbor of stone. But in the end, 
the two came into conflict, and the dragon was banished to a dark place deep underground. Over the long years of his imprisonment, his power has slowly dissipated. He has also become disfigured from the various kinds of erosion that he has been subjected to. The faint rattling of his dragon lord's shackles and his deep, angry growl echo through the bowels of the mountains like memories of a bygone era. La Senora Senora, the eighth of the Fatui Harbingers. Unlike other Fatui who used the authority granted by delusions, her delusion is meant to shackle a flame that will devour everything, as opposed to a weapon used to kill. It might be more fitting to consider this a tool of imprisonment. And it was the embers of that flame, which had accumulated over many years, that would break through the frosty seal of delusion and apply a warped rogue upon her. The crimson dawn was reflected in her pupils, and at last, she unfolded her flaming wings and flew towards the light. But that light is not the dawn, dear Rosalind. That is a sea of flame that will consume everything. A voice spoke to her amidst the light. Yet it mattered not, for she knew in her heart that the flames had devoured her long ago.